So here I was doing a little bit of research on Planet 9 and trying to find out if there are possibly other solar systems that have a somewhat similar structure with a relatively large planet on the outskirts of the main solar system. And to my surprise, I've discovered an article about a planet that is ridiculously large and ridiculously far away from its um, primary star. And that particular solar system is apparently the biggest solar system in our galaxy. Welcome to What the Math, and let's talk about this solar system. <laughs> And to my surprise, I was also able to find uh, that system in Space Engine, which we'll be using near the end of the video, where we're going to explore that particular uh, system in more detail. But let's actually do this in Universe Sandbox first. We're going to go into the normal solar system here, and I'm going to show you how big that solar system is. Now, it has a funny name. Its name is 2Mass J2126-8140. Unfortunately, though, this system or its star or its... Um, planet are not in uh, Universe Sandbox, it hasn't been added to um, their catalog yet, because it ends at 21.1 uh, one and doesn't have 21.2. So that's okay, we're gonna create a manual um, version of this particular system using our own sun. So here is sun, here is earth, this is one astronomical unit, and let me just show you how large this system would be. And essentially what they've discovered is, so there's a central star, uh, very similar to our sun, and relatively far away from it, and I'm going to have to use edit here, uh, at a distance of, on average, about 4,500 astronomical units, which is close to 5,000 times more than um, the distance from our sun to our planet Earth. There is a very, very large gas giant, and look at how much I have to zoom out here first. There we go. So I just place it around 5,000 astronomical units. Uh, there's another star here, and this star, uh, sorry, not star, there's another planet here, and this planet is called 2Mass J2126-8140, and this is kind of what it looks like in the game. So it's sort of um, a gas giant that's about to become a brown dwarf that may one day, uh, or would have one day become a star if he had more mass, but it just didn't have enough mass, and so it stayed as a very, very hot gas giant. And when it was originally found, um, it actually had a different name. As a matter of fact, the scientists thought that this was a brown dwarf, but turns out that it's not. Um, and uh, when they've uh, originally found it, it was classified as a brown dwarf until they realized it was actually moving exactly in the same direction and in this, exactly the same way as its parent star. And so they had to then rename this to, um, to basically give it a, a planetary classification because uh, they realized this was actually the largest possible solar system that we've found so far and uh the radius right here is about 5,000 thermal units which is about seven percent of one light year so it's it's pretty far uh, not i guess not as far as, as as a nearest star to us which is four light years for four and, and point two light years um but it, it is pretty uh, pretty far nevertheless and one orbit around this star would take this planet about um one million years so yeah i'm sorry i keep calling it star but it's not really a star it's actually it is a very large gas giant uh, and so the temperature of um of this particular planet is close to 2000 degrees celsius it's about uh, 10 to 15 times mass of jupiter and if i were to place jupiter next to it this is what it would look like so it's in terms of size it's not much bigger than jupiter but it definitely is a lot more massive, and um, it de definitely might even have a very large sort of um, moon system around it, um, which is what we're going to be exploring in Space Engine uh, near the end of the video. And what's really interesting about this particular system is that now we actually realize that uh, stars can actually form in different ways, not just uh, in how we usually imagine them forming from one sort of a disk of spinning material where certain things become planets, certain things become uh, moons, and then certain things become uh, the star, essentially. But here, uh, the new proposition is that th there was very likely have been sort of like a cloud of gas in this region and a cloud of gas in this region that sort of uh, coalesced into a star with planets and a gas giant with its own moon. So they actually 
were almost like a binary system, except this never became a star. And they were relatively far away from each other. So here, what would happen um, if a star, if, if another star came into um, sort of vicinity of this system, um, unfortunately, this this planet would lose its orbit. So I'm going to demonstrate this by just launching a random main sequence star through this area right here. Let's just launch it somewhere. I don't know, just here. And here we go. So if if this actually passes by relatively close to them, uh, the orbit of 2 mass J2126 would actually be disturbed enough for it to lose its um, orbital path. And there you go. This, you can see orbit already changing. And then eventually just kind of fly away into the outer solar system. And interestingly, it actually got disturbed at first and almost lost its orbit, and then it re-established it. So I guess um, there's still a chance that it, it may have had some sort of a close encounter with other stars and didn't really escape. Uh, but what, what's really important to understand here is that it, it may have been formed in a very um, relatively empty environment, so other stars couldn't disturb these two, and that its orbit is relatively weak. So if I were to do this again, let's just do this for, for fun one more time, we're going to launch another random main sequence star going somewhere here, and it's going relatively fast. I should probably slow down a little bit. Let's slow down to 500 kilometers per second, and here we go. So it's passing. It's going to pass relatively close to uh, the planet here, and it's very likely is going to disturb it, its orbit uh, to the point where it might actually escape. And so there you go. Um, so yeah, there's uh, quite a lot of uh, really cool theories that might form as a result of uh, this discovery, uh, mostly in, in relation to how our solar systems are formed. And look at that, it's re-established its orbit again. It's been really stubborn, which is pretty cool, I guess. Anyway, so um, what I wanted to basically talk about is the idea of us really not knowing that much about um, how some stars may actually form. We have a lot of um, hypotheses, we have a lot of speculations, but um, now that we've found this really interesting system that has a planet so, 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 so far away, uh, first of all, it suggests that, uh, yes, Planet 9 might be a reality because we don't really exactly know how some planets might, might form. Um, and uh, the other thing is that, uh, so there's actually quite a lot of different ways for solar systems to form. And let's actually go into Space Engine and explore this particular uh, planet, or I guess you could call it an almost brown dwarf, because in Space Engine it has some really cool planets around it. And so if you go to Space Engine and you start typing 2 mass, and then basically uh, what you, I think you have, you have to type is 2126, uh, you will find there's only one uh, star that um, meets this classification, and it's this star right here. Go to it, and that's essentially what uh, that planet is that what I was talking about. Unfortunately, since this is a little bit outdated here, it's still classified as a brown dwarf, which it, which is what it was up until 2016. And 2016, we've realized that this is actually not a brown dwarf. This is just a very large gas giant. Uh, the mass here is a little bit larger than it should be. Here, it's 23 masses of Jupiter. In reality, it's about closer to about 10 to 15, um, or something close to about 40% mass of Sun. So it's, uh, it's relatively large, but uh, nevertheless, it's not really a brown dwarf. It is an exoplanet, uh, or a planet outside of solar system. And this particular exoplanet in Space Engine has its own system of moons, and some of which are actually really awesome. I've already explored this a little bit, but we're gonna go and um, land on some of them just to check them out. So this here is a cool Oceania, or a cool ocean world that, check it out, it looks relatively scary actually, because it's kind of red and uninviting. But essentially, imagine being on this world and landing on this moon that has these really, really sort of dark red skies at all times. This is what it would look like in the sky if you were to kind of land here. And this is essentially an ocean, I think. I think that's an ocean, um, but uh, this planet is, uh, uh, this moon is relatively cold, it's minus 24 degrees Celsius, so any water here would be obviously frozen, and anything else, um, like for example methane or any other um, material would not actually be liquid just yet, so it might not actually have any, any actual oceans on it, even though it's called Oceania. The second one here is a cool, uh, or cold desert, uh, which is also a pretty funny name. Uh, minus 148 degrees Celsius, a pretty cool 
um, northern or southern lights or aurora borealis, whatever you want to call it there. Um, and once again, this is a pretty red world, a very beautiful red world, kind of reminiscent of Mars in a sense. And what I really like about some of these desert worlds is that if you actually come cl really close to them, you'll get to see all of this awesome procedurally generated detail that this game is famous for. So the closer you get, the more detail you get. Look at that. We get almost get to see the sand grains. So here we are. We've landed on this really cool desert world. Um, and so a lot of these are actually pretty interesting to explore. And I'm, I really like how uh, this particular uh, planet or exoplanet uh, actually is not actually technically exoplanet yet. So it's considered to be a star. Uh, but because of this, it's, it has these various planets generated around it. Now, we don't actually have the companion star or the main star here. Um, unfortunately, this star is not an, in the catalog for this game. Um, but hopefully the developer will add it at some point because this was a pretty big discovery in early 2016. So I'm sure he's going to edit it for sure. Now, there's a few more frozen worlds here. Um, they kind of look very similar to the one I just showed you. And so most of them basically look like darker and colder Marses. Uh, and this one actually has a pretty interesting pattern in it. Almost looks like a picture of a man. Um, but what I wanted to see is if there is also gas giants, because I haven't explored all of these. And I think there is actually no... Uh, not going to be any gas giants here yet. So this is actually a pretty interesting and pretty accurate representation of what um, this particular exoplanet might have orbiting around it. So all of these would be moons and um, there will be quite a lot of them. They will be quite large. So imagine just like an, uh, our Jupiter has at least uh, four major moons that we call Galilean moons. This one seems to have uh, six of them and they're all very large. They're relatively cold and they would be um, possibly quite dark as well because the only light they would be getting is from um, the uh, um, the exoplanet itself and it doesn't actually emit that much light. Uh, here it's a little bit larger so it emits a little bit more light but since it's not technically even a brown dwarf it only really emits um, large amounts of um, infrared light, which would uh, make these planets relatively warmer than they would be otherwise, but it wouldn't give them an, a lot of visual light. So they would still be quite dark, not even as bright as you see them here. All right, so I think that's all I wanted to show you in this particular video, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, so we're going to land on this Oceania once again and check out, uh, actually fly through these um, northern lights as well and check out its surface one more time. And um, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. And don't forget to share this video with someone who you think may enjoy space videos as well. Like it if you liked it. And look at this beauty. Holy cow, this is actually worthy of a screenshot. Um, and uh, if you actually want to check out more of the videos uh, that related to Space Engine or Universe Sandbox 2, do check them out in the link that you see on the screen or in the description below. And what I just realized is actually, if I wait a little bit longer on the surface of this planet, you'll notice that there's actually new effects here. Specifically, look at that, there's clouds in the sky. This is such a beautiful view. So this is what this Oceania looks like. This is something I didn't expect to see while making this video. This is incredibly beautiful. So there's a, almost like a sunset, I guess. I guess it's sunset, not really sunrise. And you get to see the ocean floor here. And then we can even go underwater, I think. Yeah, we can go a little bit underwater. So there is some sort of a liquid. I just don't really know what it is. Um, because here it says we have atmosphere of carbon dioxide, sulfur oxide, and nitrogen. But I don't think it's either one of these. But anyway, so that's essentially what I wanted to show you in this beautiful ending of this video. And once again, if you'd like to support this channel even more, there's always the Patreon page where you can possibly support me a little bit more so that I can actually make this channel even better, even more interesting and produce more high quality videos. Anyway, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate all of your support. I'll see you in the next video. Game you later. And as always, bye bye.